Hi guys, uh, this is Anurag and today we are will be talking about demystifying mobile app security. Uh, before we get started, a uh, quick introduction from my side. Uh, I, I work as a software security engineer in Emerging Technology and Incubation Group here at Cisco. Uh, I have more than four to five years of experience in software development and I am interested in the mobile application security side. Uh, and I also have a master's degree from, uh, from, from Northeastern University in Boston. Uh, and today we will talk about mobile uh, mobile threat landscape. We'll start with mobile threat landscape, and then we will eventually move into what uh, mobile application security looks like. Uh, before we talk about mobile threat landscape, uh, a quick recall on what happened in the last couple of years. Uh, in last couple of years, uh, our enterprise data actually moved to our mobile devices with work from home being a norm now. Each of the enterprises are pushing for uh, for the employees to work from home and use their mobile devices, and we are no longer connected to enterprise networks to access any data. This led for the data to move from our laptops or our data center to our mobile devices. This led to a lot of mobile app breaches in in last one year, starting with the famous iOS mobile mail app vulnerability, uh, where there was a remote code execution which would allow an attacker to infect a device by sending simply an email, uh, which would crash your iPhone or crash your mobile device, and eventually can extract any data on that. Uh, this was not enough. Uh, when in Feb of 2020, we had the biggest uh, PAE data breach from Walgreens mobile app, where an, a vulnerability in the messaging app actually uh, led to exposure of prescription information of patients, uh, which was a very high target for uh, for the attackers. Uh, mid in May of 2020. Uh, India's largest payment app uh, was uh, Beam Payment app, which was a data leak which exposed almost 7 million Indians, including their address, scans of their Aadhaar IDs. Aadhaar ID is like an SSN, which, which is a unique identifier for the, uh, for the citizens of India. Uh, in, July, in July of 2020, we had the BlackRock mobile banking malware, which actually camouflage itself as Google update and, and requested accessibility settings in the privileges, uh, resulting in uh, tracking information from your app and eventually extracting information from your app. Uh, in August of 2020, we had another breach, which was Firebase data leak. Uh, more than 4,000 Android apps, which uses Google Cloud hosted Firebase as their backend service, was unknowingly leaking a lot of sensitive information uh, from, from the users of the app. This was not enough when recently, a uh, couple of months back, uh, Washington Post came out with a report which says that Pegasus was using uh, spying software on business executives and human rights uh, activity, uh, activists and journalists to see, to, to read into their messages, to read into their apps, and to read into uh, what, what they are actually doing on a day to day basis. So it was basically an attack which allowed an adversary to break to jailbreak an iOS device uh, and steadily spy on the victims, collecting information uh, like their camera images, email messaging, and even passwords or information about their contact list. So with, with the shift in the mobile, there is a shift in the attacker's mindset also that mobile our primary target now to extract any information and to breach into any enterprise or into breach into any given individual. Let's take a look into what, what has changed, why there is a different mobile attack surface or how mobile app is different and a favorite for the attackers to, to, go, to look into the data. Uh, if you look into mobile attackers point of view, there are four different aspects to it. Traditionally, we were, we were using web application. A web application has one interface and we rely on the browser to actually connect back to the backend to get any information. Uh, when it comes to mobile app, uh, there are four different ways an attacker can actually ta target a, a given mobile app or, or target any, any data on the app. The first is the device itself. Since as a mobile app developer, we don't know where the app will be installed, on what device the app will be installed. We don't know where the device will connect to. 
either you can connect it to an enterprise network you can connect it from a home or you can connect it on an airport which is a public open wifi uh, the third is other apps on the device as a mobile app developer you don't have control on what i as an end user install on my own device and what other apps are on my device which can interact with my system or which can interact with your app uh, and thirdly with the device being mobile in nature as the word suggests uh, we don't know who is actually using the app is it the right person who should use the app or is it somewhere else who has access to your mobile device and is actually using the app uh, so these four factors create a new attack surface or it creates an easy attack surface for the attackers to actually look into your mobile device or mobile app to capture any data or to exploit any of the vulnerabilities in it to to get access to uh, moving on let's look at different uh aspects of ios versus android if we talk about mobile world there are two major flavors of os which is out there ios and android uh for ios and android uh in in the in the given slide you will see uh that for ios the device based attack is less and and the network based attacks on ios is more and the app based attack is less but if in contrast android has more uh network based attacks and more apps based attack why is there a disparity between that uh for ios it's a closed ecosystem where it's really difficult to breach into a device and try to uh, access any other app or any other vulnerable app but since android is open source every other provider whether it's samsung or whether any other uh provider of mobile app has their own flavor of android so it's 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 easier to attack apps in an android ecosystem than compared to an ios ecosystem uh moving on we will talk about security testing so given the fact that mobile app is the hottest target for mobile app attackers uh, we want to get into how as a developer we can build a secure mobile app so that the data which the mobile app is handling the data which 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 the mobile app is actually uh, storing on the device or even transmitting it back to back to your service is secure uh, before we start with uh, with talking about the mobile app security it's very important to understand what a software development life cycle of mobile app looks like for any software development cycle it's very important to think of security of mobile app right from the early stages when you actually start building an app uh thinking of security in early stages of of building an app is defined as threat modeling an app what exactly is threat modeling threat modeling is nothing but is more about asking right questions to give you the to to give you an perspective of what can go wrong with your app so it's basically identifying the threats for your app and then identifying what is the best way to mitigate those threats so that your app is secure uh these are the four common question which you should ask while building an app uh for for, for any mobile app it's uh, it it works on privileges it it needs certain privileges on the device to start with and from there it takes up the use case which your app is designed to it so for given app we need to ask does the app need a certain privilege does it need a uh, access to camera so if your app is a calculator app does it need access to your camera or does it need access to your contact list uh, what third party libraries are being used uh, are you developing most of the modules on yourself or are you using any untrusted third party which can result in a zero day vulnerability and can actually be exploited on your device mobile device uh, third is how data is being stored uh, when when we talk about mobile data uh, there are two ways you can store the data you can store it either on the device or on the back end and your mobile app client will just be talking to the back end to get any data in such cases if we are storing any data on the device itself since the device is not in our control it's very important to actually check that the dot uh, that the data stored on the device is stored securely and it's, it's and it's encrypted and it's not accessible by any other app or any other person and lastly how does the app is communicating to the backend or any other app what is the inter app communication look like and how does your app is actually communicating back uh, to the backend uh, when communicating back to the app end it's always uh, prescribed to have it over tls that the traffic is encrypted 
And while talking to other apps, there is proper authentication and authorization should be in place to make sure that whatever app is being communicated or whatever data is being communicated is properly authenticated and authorized. Uh, so if you're a developer and you're trying to build a new mobile app, these are the four essential questions which we need to ask so that we have a clarity of what the app is building. And from there, we will take on further. Uh, the next step uh, is, is, is understanding about OS top 10. Uh, what is OASP? OASP is Open Web Application Security Project. It's a community-based uh, approach of identifying the top 10 threats in each of the field. Uh, for now, OASP was looking into web application, but now it has moved into looking into top 10 mobile threats and also top 10 IoT threats. So what you see on the slide is, is the latest OS top 10 from uh, for, for mobile. Uh, these are the major components or these are the major areas of threats which are identified in the production apps by the OS community. Uh, that these are the major vulnerabilities which can happen in your app. So while building an app, you should look into these 10 categories that these are the categories where I need to focus on. And from there, we need to implement any mitigation for this. I will quickly run down each of these 10 uh, uh, to give you an idea of what it looks like. The first is improper platform usage. Improper platform usage relies to if you are using Android or iOS, have you implemented your touch ID and face ID correctly? What data is being transferred uh, to touch ID and how they are actually looking, uh, how, how, how you are actually integrating with touch ID and face ID. Uh, second is insecure data storage, how you are storing the data on the device and even in the backend. Insecure communication relates to how your app is sending data back and forth from the backend server. Uh, insecure authentication uh, is, is something like how your end user is authenticating to your app. Are they using username password? Are they using uh, touch ID, face ID, and how you are handling that authentication data? Uh, the next is insufficient cryptography, which relies on the content that what cryptographic algorithms and how you are using cryptography in your application to make sure whatever data you are using is encrypted and is not accessed by any other person. Uh, insecure authorization. Uh, the difference between insecure authentication and authorization is uh, insecure authentication is whether your app is authenticating the right person, which means are you making sure that the person who should have access to your app is the right person who has access to it uh, by identifying the identity of that person using face ID or touch ID. Authorization is once you have identified that the person is correct, what are the areas or what are the privileges that persons should have? That is insecure authorization. If your app is authorizing a user, a, a normal user to change anything in the code, that is an insecure authorization. Uh, next uh, two, uh, next three are interconnected, which is client code quality, code tampering, and reverse engineering. Uh, these all are interconnected as what is the quality of code which you have written? Can that code be tampered? And how these both these will be happen is by reverse engineering your app. So make sure that the code quality is right. Uh, the code, nobody else can tamper your code or change your code, and they can do it by reverse engineering. So can I take your app from the app store, reverse engineer it, and change the functionality of it, and eventually make your app do something else which was never ever defined by you to do for that app? And the last is extraneous functionality where where there are functionality which can be exploited by other apps to, to perform something else. So what's the use of OS top 10? When we are building an app, it's very important to understand which of these categories applies to our app and how to protect them. Uh, if you go on OS, it will give you an idea of how to, uh, it, it will give you a detail of what these vulnerabilities are and what are the best ways to actually mitigate these vulnerabilities. Uh, the next uh, slide is about automating security testing. Now we know that security of mobile app is important and we want to know, uh, and we know what are the different vulnerabilities which can happen on the mobile app. Uh, then how, as a developer, what is the best way you can do to prevent these vulnerabilities? First is to understand the OS top 10 and then use its mitigation control to address it. 
and the second part is security testing of the mobile app in your in your development process when we talk about mobile security testing we can we can broadly divide it into static and dynamic so what is static and what is dynamic static analysis or static security testing is simply taking up the binary the apk or the ipa uh, reverse engineering it and try to find what is wrong with the application with terms of OS top 10 or with terms of any vulnerability which can be exploited. Uh, what is dynamic? Dynamic is, uh, is, is another form of testing where you actually run the app on an emulator on or a device and try to see what can be, what malicious can be done with your app during the runtime. Uh, these are the tools which, which are open source tools which you can use. Drozer, Frida, House and Objection. Uh, Drozer is a tool which help you pretend to be a third party app on the device and try to interact with the device. Uh, Frida is more of a dynamic in instrumentation tool which you can use to actually change any execution of code during runtime. House and Objection are the similar tools which are used for dynamic analysis in the iOS world. Uh, for, the next, uh, uh, for the next slide, we will be switching on to a demo of one of the open source tool, which is MobSF. It is a static analysis tool where we will see how the MobSF tool will give you an idea of what are the different vulnerabilities which can happen on your mobile app uh, for that. Uh, so what you see on a screen is the local deployment of MobSF. Uh, you can simply search MobSF on, uh, on, on, on Google and you will see a Docker deployment which you can simply follow the steps to get a local deployment on your machine. Uh, for, for demo purposes, I have installed it. Uh, this is a tool which runs on a Docker and can be easily installed on your machine. Uh, it's very simple to use. You can drag and drop any IPA or an APK on this tool and you will get a detailed report of it. For the purpose of demo, I have installed a DAM in, uh, intentionally vulnerable app diva which is uh, which uh, which is available on the net and we will look into the static report of it uh, what it gives initially is uh, is a security score of where where the uh, where your apps stand in terms of security uh, if you look into detail uh, it will give you the major vulnerabilities for example it start with the signing of the certificate for example this app is signed with the v1 signature scheme which is the older scheme and it is making it vulnerable to the janus vulnerability on android uh, next it will give what permission this application is looking for and what uh, permission this application is using so one of the dangerous permission which the application is using is is it's reading and writing from the external storage why it is dangerous because uh, the external storage is not something which is reliable because any other app can write to it and if your app is relying on external storage, it might uh, be vulnerable to anything which another app writes on external storage. Um, this is a detailed report in which you can look forward. And uh, I would like to point two more vulnerabilities. It's it's the debug, uh, debug enabled for the app. Uh, debugging is enabled for the app, which makes it easier for any attacker to do reverse engineering or hook any debugger into the app and look into the processes. Uh, and next is a uh, few of the activities are not protected, which means they can be called by other apps before uh, other apps on the device, leaving it accessible to any other application. So if your activity or intent is not protected, any malicious app on the device can simply call it and will be able to execute whatever on, on the device is. Uh, so I just wanted to give you an idea of what this tool looks like. Uh, one more thing which is very important uh, for this tool is uh, to have the API docs. Uh, it, it has an API which can be used uh, to integrate it with your CI CD pipeline so that you can get a report like this for every build which you do. So please feel free to explore this tool and use the APIs to have a continuous security posture assessment of your mobile apps. So at the end, I would like to leave you with four important thoughts or key, key takeaways from this presentation. Uh, with, with the recent change of time, mobile apps are the most attractive targets for attackers. As a developer, it's really important to understand the mobile architecture and the different attack vectors which, which can happen on the mobile app. 
Uh, the OS top 10 is the great resource to help you understand how mobile apps can be abused by the attacker. And at last, there are many open source tools which you can use to automate mobile security testing and implement a secure life cycle for your mobile so that it gives and improves the security of your apps as also an experience of developer and the end users. Uh, there are many commercial apps like Now Secure and uh, Australab, uh, which which you can use, uh, but I would say if you if you are new to mobile app security, start with open source app and see where your mobile application security stands to move forward. Thanks for your time, and yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you.